What's up, everybody? <coughs> it's your boy West Grand. You're watching Suburban Nerd. This channel where I give my nerd views on today's nerd news. But today, today is a very special day. Not just because you know we got some new trailers over the weekend. Not because you know I do the weekend box office, but because I finally have that hundred subscriber. Thank you. It has been taking a lot longer than I wanted it to. Mainly because I've been working my ass off, working like 65 to 70, or well, I don't even know how many hours in both my jobs. I'm sorry I haven't pumped out these videos like I want to. It's just, it's so crazy. Right now it's like, what, 1 o'clock or something like that. I'm just trying to do my best. And thank you guys for subscribing. And, you know, I just appreciate everything that you guys do and support me. But, I'm gonna, like I said, gonna go into the things that I talk about on the first day back from the weekend. Whether it's Monday or Tuesday, but luckily it's, well, it's actually Monday, but you're going to get the video Tuesday. Sorry. But yeah, uh, I'm going to be talking about the weekend box office, of course. I'm going to be talking about James Cameron wants Marvel to fail. I'm going to be talking about some trailer news, which, you know, talking about that Deadpool 2 trailer. And also be talking about some Kevin Feige and Hall H not happening. And um, so, first let's get started with the weekend box office. <laughs> Rolling in first place, surprisingly... Stealing the throne from Rampage, The Rock's movie, is a quiet place. Somehow it's taken its way back, climbed its way back up to number one. At $22 million, just beating out, edging out Rampage with 21. Domestically, this movie has made $130 million. Granted, y'all know how I feel about A Quiet Place. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm just not saying it's as good as everyone thinks it is or praises it to be. So I'm just check out my my review if you guys want to see it. Check it's right there. So that's it for a quiet place. First place, 22 million, making that money. I'm happy for it. I just don't. It's just overhyped for me. Uh, going into second place, like I said, Rampage with 21 million dollars. The Rock somehow got dethroned, but it didn't drop as much as you think. It dropped about 40 percent. Uh, because it only made, was it like 28 or something like that last week? So, therefore, dropping to 20, 21 is not that bad, really. Uh, it didn't like it dropped to like 5 million or 2 million. So, good on The Rock. Still making that money. Still that franchise Viagra, what they call them. Uh, and then, third place, we've got I Feel Pretty with Amy Schumer. Um, Trainwreck was the la was, well, last really good one that everyone said. They had another one with her, Dolly Parton, or whatever. But it just. Or was it Dolly Parton? I can't even remember. It just wasn't a movie that everyone loved. But um, I'm hearing some good things about I Feel Pretty. It's most mostly about motivational. It's basically she gets hit in her head and she makes and, and she believes she's as pretty as like the you know, last thing that the inspirational person was saying. So therefore she's just going around thinking she's this gorgeous girl. I'm not saying Amy Schumer is not pretty. She's a pretty lady. I'm just saying she's thinking she's the top model of the world. And I guess we're just going to see what great confidence can get you in the world, regardless of how you look. So, I don't think I'm going to watch it. I barely get to watch any of my shows, but hey, we'll see how that works. That came in at $16.2 million, which is good on it for, 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 you know, for the movie itself. It wasn't, they probably didn't think they were going to make that much money. So, 16 is pretty good for them. I'm pretty sure they thought they were going to probably get like $8 million, but good on that. In fourth place, we've got Super Troopers, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did that before when I talked about this movie being made a while ago. This It came out 420, of course. If you guys have not seen the original Super Troopers, you need to get yourself in this. You need to see that movie. It is something to behold. It's, one of the, it's a cult movie, but it's a great and funny cult movie. I remember I saw that movie, and I just was like... Uh, like, I couldn't believe all the stuff I saw. The way these state troopers... Just the first five minutes. If the first five minutes don't get you, where the guy, <laughs> where the cop literally gets, uh, like, he, he's using a fake doll to make it seem like he's awake and he's sleeping, and then someone just goes and knocks the head off and goes racing down, and he has to go take the um, fake sex doll or whatever and just start driving, chasing after him. And I'm just like, I'm not going to spoil it, but like I said, it's really funny. Y'all should see it. It made $14.7 million. Sorry, I ran blah. $14.7 million is what Super Troopers made, and that's good on it. I'm pretty sure they thought they were only going to make maybe seven. I think they spent about like seven or maybe like, yeah, probably about seven million is what they spent. So they've already made like double their money back, and I'm pretty sure they're going to make some more money because it's a. am hearing it's pretty decent. I want to see it for myself. I'm actually going to see it uh, today when you guys are seeing this video. 
So um, check it out. I'm going to have the review up probably later that day, and we'll see how that works. $14.7 million, like I said. Uh, last place we have, in fifth place, we have Truth or Dare, another Blumhouse production where they pretty much take a premise of a game, sort of like Ouija and all these other things, and just make a, a happy death day. It was actually good. It was actually good, but this movie, not hearing too many good things, but it still made $7.9 million, which is great in a Blumhouse production because I think overall they've already they've made their budget back way like they've already done it it's already done they don't need to do nothing else they've made their money back they've made profit that's what they do that's their formula so good on them um next we're gonna talk about uh Hall H and how Kevin Feige he announced that Marvel Studio is going to skip the Hall H panel in San Diego Comic Con now this is something like I'm personally I wasn't gonna be able to get to go to it so it doesn't really matter to me, but when I do watch my Comic Con conference, uh, you know, videos, I did want to see some. But except, Marvel has done this before. In fact, I understand why they're doing it. They do not have like when the Hall H happens, the movie is already going to be out. Like uh, the Infinity War is already going to be out, and then the next movie uh, that is going to be is not going to be for a while. Um, the the what's it called? The Ant Man and Wasp. And then you got Captain Marvel, which doesn't it barely has like production. Like it's gone, just gone into production, production recording, and so they probably don't have anything. Who knows? But they are gonna have a small little um, get together or or remembrance of the 10 year anniversary. So they are gonna be there. They're just not gonna have a huge Hall H presentation. They're just gonna they're gonna be present in the San Diego Comic Con, but they're not gonna be you know in a huge panel so as far as that makes sense plus they have their d23 and they, they they sort of do their own thing they've been doing that because you know why spend all this money when we have our own little hall our own little thing that does it even though they don't they don't have it once a year like comic-con they do have their things they do or you know they do promotion these trailers you know they give us everything we don't need that much more from you know what I'm saying we're already hyped no matter what they do marvel just has that track record so no matter what they do we're going to be spending that money i'm probably going to see it uh, infinity wars like twice so this just check it out plus i'm going to see that thing in d box like i told you i want that seat moving and all that and shaking you know but that's pretty much it for the for that news of san diego comic con next on the nerd news this is the main topic. This is the main thing I wanted to talk about. James Cameron hopes Marvel fail. Now, this is something that is blowing up. Everyone's talking about it. And basically, let me just read out the words he says. Because he was promoting, you know, his, this thing about the, the, the his videos and the movies of James Cameron. And he spoke out and he was like, I'm hoping, well, I'm hoping we'll start getting Avenger fatigue. Hey, pretty soon. Uh, well, they're hoping that we get Avenger fatigue pretty soon. Uh, not that I don't like the movies. It's just, come on, guys. Uh, there are other stories to tell besides hyper gonadal or gonadal males without families doing death-defying things for two hours and wrecking cities in the process. It's like, oi. I have a button for people like that when they speak out of place. It is called the bullshit button. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. That's what, this is what James, coming out of James Cameron's mouth. Why? Because how dare you, sir? How dare you speak any type of ill about Marvel? You know what it is? I was going to blow up. I'm going to try not to. Why? Because it's just seeming a little like a bitter old man. You know why? Because oh, this this is my analogy that I thought up of the situation. It's like when you've got the cool kid in the high school or whatever, right? The cool kid, the coolest kid in the school. He's the prettiest or or, or, or the most athletic, and just the, the, everyone wants to be with them. Everyone wants to be around them. Well, let's say guy or girl, whoever. You're the prettiest person, or attractive person in the school. Then a new person comes into the school and is super attractive and athletic and all that. And though you've been getting now everybody's been, you know, worshiping you and all that for so long. But now because you know you just been lax, just living your life, this new person comes in, all of a sudden you feel a little threatened. 
That's James Cameron right there. He's feeling a little threatened. Why? Because the dude has not come out with a movie in nine effing years. Nine years is what it's been since Avatar. Granted, you knocked it out of the park with Avatar. And granted, before like you, you have the top two movies in in the rank. So I gotta give you your respect. I gotta give you your props. You know, you've got you you got your your Titanic and you got your Avatar. Although you cannot be talking about them keep pumping out the same thing or fatigue when you yourself have Avatar and are planning on four more sequels. Four more sequels. And I think this might be a reason why he's talking this mess so that maybe it can downplay the Avengers and what or Marvel and what they've done so that people can look forward to your thing. Sorry. People aren't looking forward to Avatar. I'll see it. But it ain't nothing I was clamoring for. When you did the first Avatar, you should have came out with a movie like two de- two years later. That's when the hype was all there. Now no one cares about the Navi. No one cares about the uh, the, the world or whatever. You know, um, uh, Unobtainium? Really? Unobtainium. That was the name you made for this material. Unobtainium. Whatever. But, and plus the storyline. You, you, you yourself, it was fatigue. Why? Because it's based, it's literally Fern Gully. Or uh, Pocahontas, or Dancing with the like. It's all these movies. The plot line is literally Fern Gully, but instead of green little small people, it's blue, blue big people. You even have a big tree that gets cut down. Damn, James Camry, talk about fatigue. You, it's fatigue in your brain that you don't see that you've been taking other things, and then now you're trying to stretch it on even more. And then don't even get me started on the on on the Terminators. You just slap your name on the last three. Not probably didn't even have your hands in it, but yet you you you, you promote the jet uh, Terminator, the franchise. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Even though it's so horrible and it's running itself to the ground, and now you're doing another Terminator, which I'm hoping is good. You're saying it takes place right after Terminator Two, Terminator Three never happened, Genesis, Salvation, none of that happened. So now it's taking place right after Terminator Two. Good on you, but dog. You're sounding bitter like an old man or like or like the kid, the cool kid that now isn't as cool. Or you don't think you're as cool as everybody else or, or, or as you used to be because now you have someone new in the thing. Yo, there's enough pie for everyone. You can do your thing. People are going to love your movie. And then people are still going to love Marvel. Don't try and downplay them so you can raise yourself up. I'm sorry. That's all I got to say as far as that. I'm sorry. Little rant, but I had to do it. So, going on to the next thing, it's not something that I'm not going to delve into too much, but it's about Gotham. Gotham on Fox. I haven't watched it for, for a good couple of weeks, for a while, probably like this beginning of this season. I haven't seen I need to catch up on all of them. I did like it. You know, it was a guilty pleasure, but I did like it. But now I'm here with Jerome, and now what the, the news is saying that Gotham's introducing a proto-Harley Quinn. I'm like, this is, you've got so many Batman villains just coming up before Batman's even Batman. Like, I don't understand this. Like, I thought it was, this was supposed to be like a, a, a gritty crime uh, show that's about James Gordon living up. Not not this, not this, the slew of, of DC villains and uh, J- Batman Jr. trying to become Batman and do stuff. I'm sorry, I didn't sign up for that. I signed up for a gritty Gotham with, like, you know, like some weird stuff. But, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop there. Next, we got Fox says that the Dark Phoenix saga, um, uh, the X Men Dark Phoenix saga, is the last one before pretty much you know what's gonna happen. Fox sells it to Disney, and I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen most likely. But um, yeah, so that's they, they said it's gonna be last one. Uh, the New Mutants. I don't know. It got pushed back so many times. I don't know. It, it, New Mutants. I thought it was supposed to take place before. No, it's supposed to take place after. The, the the Phoenix Saga, so I don't know if they're scrubbed. No, they couldn't scrub it, so I don't know if it's going to go to the movie DVD. Like, hopefully it still comes out, like, because the premise sounded pretty good. The first trailer was good before they redid everything and then pushed it back to, like, June or something like that. So, if that's the last one, I have no problem with it because Fox, they kind of need to reboot, and I don't really care. I don't mind if I don't see another, like, say, X-Men movie for a while before you know, like, Marvel incorporates them into theirs, which is 2020 or 2021, I can wait. If that's what it takes, I can wait. Because the last one, Apocalypse, was not my favorite. But I did like Day, Days of Future Past, and I did like First Class. So, they were, they it was they were on a roll until they just messed up. Sort of like they did Christopher Nolan with the Batman. You know, I, I like Batman Begins. I like Bat, uh, the Batman of Dark Knight. 
Um, and then The Dark Knight Rises was a piece of trash. Sorry, that's what it was. Um, but so be it. Like I said, if it happens, happens. Um, next, we've got Fandango re- reports that Deadpool 2 is outpacing the top-rated pre-order movie, which happens to have the first place is Fifty Shades of Grey, and it's outpacing them. And it's gonna be. It's supposedly it's gonna be the third best pre-order movie of 2018. Which, of course, you've got Avengers: Infinity War, you've got Black Panther, and now uh, you're gonna have Deadpool 2. Which it makes sense. Because you know what? I told you guys before, the, the whole pre-order things, it's going to keep breaking the records. Why? Because it's just something new. Something new. It just started like two years ago, something like that. So every for the next couple of years, you're going to hear, hear about breaking records, breaking records with these pre-orders. So it doesn't really matter. Deadpool already was going to be good. Or we're going to see it. So it's nothing really crazy. Deadpool 2 trailer came out, though. And check out right there. Because I, I uploaded it. Yo, this trailer is so funny. Peter is MVP. And it's just like, I don't know what's going down. But, like, it's... They had so many moments. Like, the end where he was, like, trying to... Where he's cutting Cable's bullets. And then you see that. He's like, oh, you're a lot faster shot than I thought. <laughs> or, uh... He was like... He, he's like, you think... You think... Like, you're nothing but... A clown dressed in a sex doll outfit. And he stabs him in the shoulder. He's like... So dark. You're sure you're not from the DC Universe? Like dog, it's just the the or even you've got Domino. He's like, "What's your power?" Um, I'm, I'm power's luck. That's not a very cinematic power. Pan to like you see slow motion car flipping over her, and then you like you like let's agree to disagree. Yeah, it's not a power. Then you've got a, like I said, Peter stole the show. Peter stole the show. <laughs> yo, like you've got um, T J Miller. Like yo, we're gonna do this. Start a super effing uh, team. He's like. Let me update the LinkedIn. Uh, so many parts about this movie was just uh, like, uh, or the trailer was just like so great. Can't wait to see it. Got my thumbs up. And the last thing was Equalizer. Equalizer. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is my whole Kratos thing. Sorry, I've just been holding this the whole time. I can't let go of this thing from God of War. You see the console back there. You know what I'm saying right there. But um, yeah. So you've got Equalizer with Denzel Washington. These Equalizer too, which is in this trailer right here. Uh, and check that out because I, I love the first Equalizer. You're going to love the second one. And, like, I, I can't explain anything else. Just check out the trailer yourself. And it's great. It's something. Uh, it just got me hyped. And I can't wait to see it. So that's pretty much it for my uh, my first day back. And with, you know, a little bit new poster. And then, like, some figures and all this other stuff. And do like, little equipment. So just remember to just, uh, comment, share, tell your friends. Um, tell everybody because you know what? This is something that uh, I just can't help, can't help uh, doing. I love this. I love. I hope this grows and gets bigger. So remember to just tag. I know I'm rambling on. It's late night. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. But yeah, remember to uh, share, like, comment down below because I love to hear anything you guys want to do, talk about. I comment back to everybody. And thank you again for uh, my hundred subscribers. So all I gotta do is just end this on this one. Hey. Remember to subscribe, check out the last Daily Nerd news, check out the playlist, and remember, I'm Wes Grant, you've been watching Suburban Nerd, and you've just been nerdified. And they stay there, and they stay there, and they stay there.